قل هذه سبيلي أدعو إلى الله على بصيرة أنا ومن اتبعني وسبحان الله وما أنا من المشركين بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين A very important question that we've just received it says what is your opinion when it comes to following a madhab? What's your opinion when it comes to following a madhab? And should everyone follow one of the four madhabs or not? And do we need to follow these madhab or not? This topic is a huge topic. And some scholars have written entire books on this topic. Myself, I've tried to summarize it in a few classes online. but. It also needs a short answer that we will try to summarize in this uh, video, insha'Allah ta'ala. First of all, a madhab means the school of thought or the way of understanding that one of the four imams used to have. So in Islam, we had many scholars who reached the level of ijtihad, when they were able to look into the Qur'an and Sunnah alone, without looking into books of fiqh, without needing help from anyone else and the four scholars who were famous the most famous scholars when it comes to looking into the Quran and Sunnah and having their own unique understandings are Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Ahmad and Imam Shafi'i. There were others who've passed away and no longer exist but these four were the most dominant and famous throughout the history of Islam and they are the four who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has preserved their ways of understanding. These ways of understanding later on attracted thousands and thousands and thousands of followers. These followers were scholars in Arabic language, in Quran, in Hadith, in Fiqh. And all of the scholars would follow one of these madhabs, the madhab that they were most attracted to. So we have thousands and thousands of scholars in every single madhab producing books of Fiqh, books of Ahkam, books of jurisprudence and mentioning the details of the rulings in every single madhab. It is the norm, and it has been the norm throughout history, that a Muslim falls under one of these four madhabs and follows it. And following a madhab does not mean that your life is going to be restricted, because even inside the madhabs, there are conditions and there's certain circumstances when you're able to leave your madhab and follow a different opinion and you need a scholar in the madhab to tell you when and how to do that. But generally, following a madhab in your ibadat, in your wudu, in your salah, in your zakat, in your siyam, in your hajj, generally following the way a madhab teaches these practices has been the norm throughout the history of Islam. And it is definitely something recommended. No one should underestimate the importance of these madhabs because they have preserved the fiqh of Islam throughout history as I have mentioned in details in my online classes when it comes to following the madhab. And I've mentioned the pros and cons of different approaches to fiqh that exist today. Do you have to follow a madhab? Some scholars say you need to follow a madhab but others say you don't need to follow a madhab although not following a madhab can be a little bit tricky because you will need to go to a scholar in one of the four madhabs in every single question you have and ask them what to do every time you need to do something. So you have two choices. Either you study under someone who has a madhab and you follow the way of that madhab and you are constantly in contact with the scholars of that madhab or you need to ask a scholar who has studied and who has reached the level of fatwa in one of the four madhabs, every time you fall into something. But you can't not follow a madhab, nor take from scholars who follow a madhab and just make up your own fiqh and start to do the wudu the way you're used to doing it, the way you learned at school, the way your family used to make wudu. That is not permissible at all. So it's more practical to follow a madhab. It's more practical to generally understand the madhab, to understand how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's not permissible to do things from your head or to do things the way you're used to doing it even though you don't have any basis to it, even though you don't know where it comes from. So my advice to every Muslim is to, number one, respect the madahib. 
to encourage people who want to learn Islam to learn their fiqh through a madhab, to respect other madhabs. Once you follow one madhab, you don't disrespect the other madhabs. And we believe that all madhab are correct. So as Imam Ibn Qudam and, other mentions, and others mention, that the scholars of Islam have agreed upon it being permissible to follow any one of the four madhabs. And if you do an act of worship according to one of the four madhabs, your act of worship is accepted. If you make salah, if you pray according to a madhab, say the Hanafi madhab, and then someone is next to you is praying according to the Shafi madhab, both of your salah is correct. And none of you need to repeat your salah, even if you were to change your madhab later on, you don't need to repeat those salawat. Why? Because you've done what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks you to do, and that is your um, ibadah done to perfection inshallah ta'ala and the fourth advice I give is for every Muslim to understand and to know how to do the actions of worship that they face every day in their life it's haram not to know how to pray not to know how to make wudu not to know how to purify yourself from the bathroom and every time you approach a different stage in your life and you need to do an action, you need to know the rulings of that action. So if you want to go to Hajj, it's haram to go to Hajj without knowing how to do Hajj. If you're able to fast and Ramadan comes, it's haram to start fasting without knowing how to fast. So we need to be aware of the general rulings of Islam, rulings of our actions. And of course, the easiest way is to, is to study or to follow or to connect with scholars who have studied under these huge schools of thought that are very fruitful and produced these schools of Islam throughout history. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sallam.